Hello and welcome to my coverage of the Ranfurly Shield clash between Waikato and Otago live, well not live, <laughs> from here um, at FMG Stadium. Um, in in uh, what's going to come up, I'm just going to give you my post-match review that I go straight after the game. Um, we'll then go into post, go, then go into, into interviews where I'll have a chat with um, Matt Fadders, uh, who I had a chat up with in Auckland, and he has a little complaint that I don't uh, provide the same sort of service as I did up there. Um, we then talk to Ben, who's the head coach of um, Otago, uh, about their uh, challenge for it, and also looking forward to their um, semi-final game against Hawke's Bay. And then finally, I have a chat with Roger Randall, who I've had a ch obviously talked to um, quite a lot on this channel. And this is the first time I've actually talked to him after a loss, so I'm um, good for him to turn up for that as well after um, six wins. So. Um, have a listen uh, to, or have a watch of uh, my post-match review and then those three interviews and uh, let me know your thoughts on the game down below. Well, welcome to full-time report from o uh, Waikato v Otago in the Ran Furley Shield um, where congratulations to Otago, they have won the uh, Ran Furley Shield 19-23. That will give them a home semi-final against Hawke's Bay uh, in the championship. Waikato will still have that home semi-final against Northland next week. So, had to go well in that first um, uh, first ten minutes, as I say, in the, of the game. There was no kicking; both sides turned it over, played it, played a lot, and then Otago built themselves a 17-point lead by finding um, space out wide, um, and also by kicking the ball. And they started kicking the ball in territory in that first half. That's where they got um, got some joy. Waikato came in, back into it in that uh, second, in, in that last sort of, in that 20 minutes before half time. Um, but it took a lot of effort from them to score their points. Uh, they, they were camped for at least 10 minutes in the uh, Otago 22 to score on half time, for um, example. In the second half, there was just um, one score each. Um, Waikato getting themselves um, a try after um, 48 minutes where their line out more was stopped, but they spun it out wide and managed to um, score. Um, in the corner, and that was one of the things that uh, Otago did very well. As they stopped that um, Waikato line out more. Um, when you think that Semu uh, is one of the uh, top try scorers in the competition, who's the hooker for um, Waikato, uh, a lot of those are from line out malls. You can see that actually that Otago put a lot of work into that during the week and it paid off. Um, there were some crazy passes from Waikato, and they got breaks, but they really uh, didn't finish them off. And you're talking against an intercept, intercept king team. Um, they actually did very well not to concede any intercept tries, to be honest with you, because they made breaks, but they just didn't finish them off, and they were, throw, they were, they were trying to uh, throw some crazy um, offloads um, and passes during that time. Waikato also had um, issues uh, at the, uh, the line-out um, um, Sorry, uh, no, the target had issues at the lineup. Waikato had issues losing the ball at the breakdown. Um, there were going to be a few contentious decisions in this. Um, there was a, um, a high tackle that I think the, ref the TMO called for um, slipping into it. Uh, so, um, and uh, that they spent a long time looking at, uh, at that one. That would have been a yellow or a red card to Otago and also be a great field position for Waikato. Um, but I say that uh, went, went that way. Uh, and I think. There'll be plenty of talk from um, the Waikato supporters about the referee, um, but at the end of the day, you have to take control of the game yourself. And they lost this one by with their line-out malls um, and basically Otago's defence. It's not able to break them down. When they had those breaks, they didn't show enough composure. Um, and in the end, um, as I say, Otago came out with a four-point win, um, built largely on their defence in that second half um, and uh, getting those points in the first ten minutes. Right. I'm off downstairs to try and get a couple of interviews, um, and then uh, we'll. Uh, and um, then I'm going to be heading back up to Auckland because for tomorrow um, I've got Auckland versus North, North Harbour in Battle of the Bridge. Here we are, post match um, with Matt Fadders, and um, as he says, he's um, absolutely knackered. Uh, but so uh, we, we chatted in Auckland, and yeah. you, this was a game you were definitely targeting. Absolutely, you gave me a cheer in Auckland, but um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the boys are knackered. There was a huge effort for us, and. I mean, it was, it was a, a definite wind out there, so that second half was a huge defensive effort for us, and just thankful that uh, we got a few tries in that first 20. Yeah, it's when you actually started to put the ball to boot is when you got the territory to get those points in that first half, uh, yeah. whereas initially you guys were trying to play a bit too much ball with ball in hand, maybe? Um, yeah, I mean, we've probably, we've probably done it all year, but it's probably been successful, and I, I think that's probably what led to our success as well in that first 20. I mean, we played with the wind, and it... Um, 
uh, we breached them at times and, and we, they gave us mismatches um, later in the phase count. So I think it definitely worked. It's it just, I mean, come about 60, 70 mark, you, you're pretty beached. But I mean, in a, a game like this, it's uh, it's pretty huge. I mean, there's a lot on the line. So there wasn't a lack of motivation to get through to the 80 with being on the, the top of the, lead, uh, the scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of that second half, you were just one point clear. And as you say, a lot on board. You've now got yourself a, a home semi-final under the roof and the shield for the summer. Um, a very nice reward for this uh, trip up north. It is. I mean, it's massive for the union. Um, just hopefully we can get a, a bit more of a following and, and more um, bums on seats in, in the, at the games. And, I mean, we haven't got a shield defence this year, but it's, uh, it's, it's huge for the union. And, I mean... To get it at home semi, it's, it's massive as well. I mean, I think we'll, so we'll be playing Hawks Bay and, and they tipped us up last time we were down there. So, I mean, that still hurts. So we're excited to um, enjoy tonight, definitely enjoy tonight. It's not often you, um, every day you win the, the Ram Frilly Shield. So, yeah, we'll enjoy that and then we'll look to Hawks Bay um, later in the week. Yeah, so yeah, big night tonight here. Fly back home. Know that you've actually got to, yeah, as you say, be able to actually stay at home under the roof, which is what you want with, that, with, your, with your own crowd. So um, congratulations and uh, go find yourself a seat and a beer. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. So here we are after um, uh, well, Otago, sorry, what's that? No. Otago have taken the Randfurley Shield um, from my castle with Ben, uh, head coach. In that first 10 minutes, um, you guys played a lot of rugby, managed to find some space out wide. But the points came when you started kicking, didn't they? <laughs> oh, look, yeah, sometimes you have to kick when, when things are on, but we always have an attacking mentality and it came off well at the start. Obviously, Waikato made some changes and addressed that and tightened up, so it forced us to kick a little bit. And no, they, they're a good side. We, we had to fight pretty hard for it. And they came back just before half time. What was, and obviously, you're going to be playing into the wind in the second half, so what was the message in the sheds at half time? Win the game. <laughs> <laughs> nice just, and simple yeah <laughs> look, uh, the spirits are really good in changing room half time messages were let's just keep trying to turn the pressure up there's a little switch sometimes you have to turn um, but that was, a, it was just about keeping that invisible energy going and uh, there were some smart decisions in the end there and you've been a side that have been getting lots of intercept tries, but this, uh, the, none, none today, but uh, yeah, big defensive effort in that second half with only just three points to your name. Oh, amazingly proud of the guys um, for defending a team which is strong in those close quarters to defend those close quarters so toughly. Uh, was a credit to their uh, testament and their, um, their drive and their, in their middle of our voice, so I'm, I'm really stoked for them. So... Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure, and it hopefully will transfer going forward too. And we know that Samu here is the uh, perhaps the leading try scorer off the back of um, line-out malls, but you guys did a, have done a lot of work during the week um, against that because you did a, a fantastic job today <laughs> against the line-out malls. Oh, look, we, we, we had to be on against those guys. You give them a, any sort of opportunity and they take it. So we, we did a good enough job, and we expect um, if we were to play them again, we expect them to come pretty hot in that area. So we're already looking forward to our sounds things. So uh, next week, under the roof um, against Hawke's Bay, um, another challenge and uh, looking forward to that. Well, it certainly helps you book in accommodation on a <laughs> Labour weekend. So <laughs> it's one job for the manager, which he's thankful for. So happy enough. Great. Congratulations on uh, getting the shield and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, so here we are post-game where Waikato have just lost to um, Otago 19-23. Um, they did a... a, a for you guys, early in that uh, in, in the first half, uh, you obviously went back behind to some of their kicking, um, but they came back into it well in that uh, going running up to half time. Yeah, they, they started really well, um, as we knew they were going to. Uh, but you know, we showed our our resilience and our mental toughness to get back in the fight, and, and right at the there, at the end there, we we just about could have snatched it. Um, so it was a little bit disappointing around our discipline at the end there, and then uh, not nailing those opportunities. Yeah, I mean, discipline was, um, and, and also execution was a bit of a problem. The, we had a few drops balls in, in, in malls at line-outs, and they, they definitely did a good job against uh, what's been a strong line-out mall um, yeah. you guys have. Yeah, they definitely did pretty well there. Um, you know, both teams were under a lot of pressure defensively and, and made a few uncharacteristic mistakes. But, um, yeah, it was just um, just uh, a lot of pressure there and it's a good precursor for what the semi-final is going to bring. So it's come a week early and um, and they played really well. So, um, you know, we'll have to be on our game next week against Northland who had a pretty good match against Bayer Pennington today. So, um, yeah, we'll take the positives out of 
today it always hurts, you know, to, to lose and especially lose that 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 treasured shield. So um, um, yeah, well done to Targa. Yeah, it's been it's been six games on the trot where I've been talking to you after after wins. is the first time I've ever talked to you after a loss. Um, also, you guys kind of knew what the semi final was going to be already. Uh, was yeah. any element of perhaps the guys just um, not not focusing as they should have done for it? Uh, not really. I just yeah, just a little bit off. Um, I think half a metre on most things we done today, and a lot of that's due to pressure. So um, now you got to give credit to to Otago and and you know. A challenge for the shield is not hard. It's actually pretty. It's it's easy to come and throw everything at it. You know, got nothing to lose. So, um, yeah, challenging for it is a lot easier than um, they were retaining it. I can tell you that. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they yeah. were, a they were challenging for it. B, they also were trying to get. They had yeah. to win to get a home semi final, I and mean, they had a lot on the table today. Yeah. Whereas, in, I mean, in reality, for Waikato, like I say mm. they already knew what was coming. So, and I, I can see how it could have. Subconsciously being a bit of a bit of an issue. But yeah, no, it's, it's just a different. It's just different. Mean like you, you you can drum up the you get out the win and all that sort of stuff, but but ultimately you know there's different pressures with um, with trying to retain it and going out there. You always say you're going out to attack the winner. It's not ours. All that jargon, but but um, you know I've been on both sides a few times and and it's definitely quite nice going in and trying to ambush people. <laughs> yeah. So now. Um, a, a, a tough week preparation for for Northland. Obviously, a big win against Northland um, up in Fongaray, but uh, mm. so they're, they're going to be hurting coming down for that uh, for that semi final. Yeah, well, it's a different game. You know, it's a you know, semi final. Yeah, it's um, different than what was riding on last week. We were pretty much guaranteed a, a semi final, so um, they'll come with nothing to lose. Same sort of attitude, um, and we've got to come and match that and, and up it even more. Well, thank you very much for your time, and um, I'll see you next weekend for the uh, semi-final. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, thank you.